Hi, I'm Lake with an eye. Glad you could stop by. So for those of you who are either new to the channel or are just stopping by, you probably wouldn't know that besides eating cereal and doing cartoon impressions that I actually kind of have a knack for drawing. In my really early videos, I did speed drawings and I, I even did a few art tutorials. So I'm making this video to kind of go back to my roots a little bit. I'm still going to do voice impression stuff. I'm still going to make other videos and stuff like that, but I figured it'd just be fun to go back to drawing a little bit. So I whipped out one of my old sketchbooks and I was revising some of my drawings I haven't finished in a long time. I decided instead of just doing the traditional speed drawing that I did back then, I could utilize the technology that I have like, you know, Photoshop and my Wacom drawing tablet to re-ink some of the drawings that I've been making, as well as adding some color. The drawing that I'm going to ink today in Photoshop and color in Photoshop is going to be this picture of 2D from Gorillaz. If you followed me on TikTok, you probably have seen me do a time lapse of this. So anyway, I'm going to go scan this real quick. All right, everyone, I have my sketch scanned. As you can see, it looks, looks all right. Now, before I move on, I want to make sure that I have my layers set up. So, I have the original sketch, OG sketch, on one layer. I have the outline layer here. And then I just put a light source layer here. You don't have to have this, but it's just something I keep there to remind me where the light source is coming from, because I think that's, that's important. Alright, so first things first with the outline. I'm going to go up here to where I have my own inking brush set. You can use the hard round pressure size if you want to, uh, just to start out, but I recommend making your own type of brush so that it just, it gives it more, uh, I use this brush because it gives it more of a, more of a pen-like feel to it. I kind of wanted to, I kind of based it around uh, Jamie Hewlett, who is the illustrator for Gorillaz, so I kind of want to have a similar kind of pin kind of look to the, uh, I guess, brush in this case. All right, so I'm going to make sure I'm on the outline layer. Oh, it's really big. Let me, let me turn that way down, probably to about, about 18 pixels. Yeah, let's do about 18 pixels. I set the flow to about 80%. That makes it a little bit easier to trace. Opacity is out 100 You also want to go to brush settings. Make sure that your shape dynamics are good. I think it might be set right now. Yeah. Um, alrighty. So you want to make the pin pressure is on right here. So that when you go to do the drawing, it'll change size the harder down you press on the pin pad. Like so. Now, as you can see, it's kind of, it's very thick right now. I'll probably turn down the, the size. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Something that I will also do, this is just what I personally do. You don't have to do this, but I will go to this spot right here. And since the light source is coming from above, what is a good idea to do sometimes is to, and this I, know, I noticed this in Jamie, Jamie Hewlett's work, he often makes the pen go a certain direction. So as opposed to having very bold, even lines like that, he'll kind of have it kind of follow the direction of the light source. With this on, as and you squeeze it down, like with this line, you get more of this effect. As you can see, it's a little bit thicker down here and thinner on the sides right here. So, you know, that's just a good way to mix it up a little bit. All right, so I'm going to time lapse through here for the outline part. I'm just going to speed this process up a little bit. After the time lapse, we'll get into the color.
Okay, so now we have the lines completed. As you can see, it looks all right. Not too bad. Now we're going to move on to the color, obviously. So, there was a test that I did earlier, a little bit of a drawing test um, on this character here. And I feel like I like the way the skin looks on here. I think it kind of it resembles almost like a 2D, so uh, I'm going to refer to this as kind of like my color palette, so to speak. All right, so I'm going to just use my eyedropper here. This will obviously be the mid-tone. And what I sometimes do is I just like to make a little color palette. So I'll make a layer for the color palette here. So that'll be the regular skin tone right here. We have the darker skin tone right here. Find the darkest skin tone, probably probably around here. Probably right there. And then we'll get a few lighter ones. This one looks a little bit lighter. It's not too light. I'll find a lighter one. Probably right about right here. It's almost white. There we go. Okay. So now we have kind of our color palette all laid out. As I was editing this video, I forgot to mention the exact color numbers I used for all the gradients here for the skin tones. So I just listed it right here for you. I thought it might help. Now we're going to get coloring. So what I do for my color is I like to first start out with obviously a color layer. So I'll make the color layer. There. Then we will click on the background layer. Then go to the bucket tool and slide to the foreground color from a black to a lightish gray. And drop that into the background layer. After that we will find our eyedrop tool and select a more lighter skin tone. Go back to the paint bucket, drop the skin tone into the color layer. I also want to connect those lines here. Okay, that's fine. All right, so now we'll go back to the magic wand and click on the empty space in our outline layer. Go up to Select, Modify, then go over to Expand. Keep it at 2 pixels. Press OK. Now go back to our color layer and click Delete. OK, so now we're going to go to our Paint Bucket tool. Actually, our Eyedropper tool. We'll select our lightest skin tone. We'll go back to the background color and select the darkest skin tone. Go to our gradient tool here, select a new layer above our regular color layer. Okay, making sure all that's good. Got the layer there, and then now we're going to just do a stroke down with this. So as you can see, the light source is up there, and we want to have the darker source, uh, the darker tone down near the bottom. So now we're going to create a clipping mask with the color beneath the layer we just created. We're going to go to our brush. Um, let's turn it down to go to a soft pressure opacity. We'll turn up the size really high, so 1,000 around 1,000 pixels will be fine. Maybe a little bit lower actually for this. We'll leave it at normal there. So what we're going to 
want to do for this part is we're going to want to put in some lighter tones, some kind of ambient light, just very, very, uh, very subtle white light to make the drawing pop a little bit more, make the painting pop. So we're going to go down to eyedrop tool, make sure we have the light, lightest tone selected, and now we're just going to put a few strokes of light right there to kind of highlight some areas. Just very, very softly. You don't want to be you don't want to be too harsh with it. Let's go a little bit tiny bit darker. There we go. Okay. That looks good. here. Yeah, it kind of fit that neck a little bit better from this side. Okay. And now we're going to go to our darker background color. And this time we're going to go to our round pressure, so our hard round pressure. So we want to add the hardness up. Turn down the size to around, uh, turn it around to 11 pixels, a little bit smaller, quite a bit smaller actually. We'll zoom in here and I'm going to put in some of the darker shadows, the harsher shadows. We're going to want to create a new layer here. Also put that in the clipping mask just like we did with the layer before this one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to identify the light source here. Okay, so this is probably going to be our darkest spot right here where the hair meets the head right here. So this is going to be probably one of our darkest spots. And down here. So we're just going to kind of fill this in here. So just wherever shadow would be, we're just going to fill that in here. This way we get a strong idea of where our darkest tones are. So yeah, I'm just going to keep filling in this here. Don't want to go too far with the shadows, just enough to see that it's there. doesn't have to be super perfect I'm just yeah it doesn't have to be super perfect there we go we want to have it going up through the chin here a little bit okay so I'm just gonna keep doing this I'll probably speed up the video a little bit through this because it's kind of a it's a little bit of a tedious process I just want to stop for a moment to show you how to do the nose here. It's probably one of the more harder parts to do. It was always kind of a struggle for me, but I'll show you kind of how I do it. So I'm just going to draw these arrows to help me out here. So we kind of want the shadow to sweep over to the side a little bit. We're actually going to want the front of the nose to be completely dark. So we're going to fill that in here. Fill 
that in like so. There we go. So we're actually going to make the shadow yeah, a little bit larger there. And by making the shadows darker on the nose here, it brings it forward. So then we're going to want to push some shadows over here, kind of going down. All right. And put maybe some cast shadows over here too. And around the eye. All right, we're just going to keep adding some more shadows here. We'll keep on shading like so. After that, we'll get started on the hair. for the hair. So I'm just going to pick a random dark blue. Then select OK. Then you'll drop that into the hair layer. Similar with what we did to the skin, we're going to use the gradient tool. High at the top, dark down below. I'll be using a linear gradient instead of a radial gradient. And we'll create that clipping mask, just like we did for this skin layer. Then for the rest here, we're just going to be doing some basic shading on the hair using a soft round paintbrush. Then add some lighter values as well. To accomplish that hair-like texture, I like to make kind of faster, quicker, thinner lines with the lighter values to really get the sense that there are strands of hair going down. Feel free to add some shadows even um, a little bit at the top to kind of make it seem a little bit more three-dimensional, just ever so slightly. As you can see, I even put a little bit of a kind of a shadow where the calic would be. Um, I think that's kind of important. It kind of shows you where the hair begins. For this drilling, I'm going to go with Tootie's white eyes. I know in the past he's had black eyes, but I kind of like his white eyes. It's kind of his more modern look. On the insides of the eyes, I just do some very subtle shading with the hard pressure brush. We'll also want to make an eyes layer. I decided to give Tootie a, kind of a basic red and white shirt, kind of a red raised up collar. It has more of a plastic beach vibe to it, and I 
really like Plastic Beach. It's probably my personal favorite Gorillaz album. You at home can feel free to do whatever kind of outfit you want, obviously. All right, there we go. Okay, I think we're going to go over a little bit of the final touches that I do, particularly for this kind of drawing. I'll go over down to my foreground color, and I'll kind of choose a darker, really dark kind of red. Then what I'll do is I'll go to my outline layer, and I'll make a copy of that layer. So what I do is I go to the outline layer, and then I right-click and select Duplicate Layer. You can see we now have our outline copy. Then I'll just go around here and I will drop the dark red color into all my lines that I have on my copy layer. I renamed the layer from Outline Copy to Outline Pop because this is going to be the final step to really make this drawing give it that extra oomph. I went ahead and I made the red even darker. Oops, don't want to fill that in. Then what I'll do with my outline pop is I will go up to filter, go down to blur, then select lens blur. Right, and then it'll pop up with this window here. We'll crank up the radius to about 35. As you can see, it's making this pop a little bit more. It's giving it that extra bit of color. Go ahead and I'll turn down the opacity of the outline pop layer to, to about 50. And there you go, we have our outlined and fully painted 2D. Thank you all for watching yet again. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and like this video. I also highly, highly implore you to go check out Ramsey's. He's a friend of mine that let me use some of his music for this video. I'm telling you, he's making some of the freshest stuff on SoundCloud right now. Go hit him up. Anyway, I'm Lake with an eye. Glad you could stop by.